camera down a little bit. Angle it down. What's up? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear this? Can, yes. can you hear us? Well, it started. Hopefully you can hear something. Yeah, I see the little lights on there. Okay, cool. <gasps> Welcome, folks. What not here? My good friend Jerry, we're in the Weems Motor Co. HQ. Uh, we just did the uh, went camping, moto camping for the first time, and didn't have enough time to make a video beforehand. So this is my little excuse for here we are. How we all doing? Everybody, I know uh, I was uh, talking to a few guys in the beginning for the uh, uh, posting up some questions. So we want to be able to make sure that we get you guys plugged in. Make sure we're paying attention to you guys as much as possible. Somebody was asking about stripping a tank. Man, Flip knows all about this. So I think he should answer that question. Uh, grinders? <laughs> power tools? Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't necessarily go for the power tools right off the bat. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you, you know how to do it. Uh, what I would say, I would buy paint stripper first. It's, it's I mean, going to okay. be... It's going to be the um, the easiest. It's not the cleanest, but it's the easiest process for getting that paint off. So that's that's my first process is just to use some paint stripper. And then that'll get you down to your base metal. And then all that fun work that comes after when it's repainting. But, yeah. So, Flip, camping, man. This was a great time. Sitting. My absolute favorite thing is just sitting in front of a fire. It's the only time I can literally just sit there and quiet. Otherwise, the demons are just talking, and that's never good for me. How was it? Was it wasn't too quiet? I mean, it was quiet, but it there, there was, was a lot of coyotes screaming, <laughs> and there was a weird cow in the distance. There was one cow just in the distance, just like, just like one cow. <laughs> and then we heard that weird, like heavy animal in the in the tree line. Something was stomping a dead wood, and Jared was worried it was more. I'm pretty sure it was just a cow or deer. I, you know, I thought about it afterwards that it possibly could have been a bear. Do we have those here? Yes, we have bears. I guess we have bears, guys. Black bears. Black bears in Florida. <laughs> oh, that's new to me. Oh, man. I think I knew that, but I just never really thought about it, but I guess. You guys like my shirt? You guys like my shirt? Sweet shirt. My hat. Oh, man. Flip doesn't have hats yet, or I'd be wearing a flip hat. No, not yet. It's my stuff. Well, soon. Working on it. It's hard to uh, track everybody's uh, stuff here as they start to ping it in pretty hard. Yeah, mine stopped working. Oh. Well, sorry. Hey, I'm, look, there's 75 of you guys here. That's right. That's it. So what are your guys' questions on on camping? We had a we had a blast. So, so basically what it was was we left out Sunday. We left what? Sunday. We left here Sunday by one. We came back Monday. We got back right at six o'clock. Yeah. So about thirty hours, thirty and something. Four hundred and fifty miles, roughly. Yeah, four hundred and fifty miles uh, round trip, and thirty hours sleeping in the in the hard ground. It didn't get too cold. It was um, not the best night of sleep I've ever had. Um, <laughs> no. No. I've had worse, but okay. So yeah, I, I can't read anything. It, it's going. It's gone quick. It's gone. What do we got? What do we got? You can read on mine. Uh, what were cigars and drink of choice while camping? Oh yeah, what was the drink of choice, Jared? My uh, whiskey. Yes. Fail, fail, fail. This guy. Uh, I swore I packed my flask and I got to camp and you can ask Flip, I was literally dumping my bags <laughs> out on the ground. Like, where is my flask? We were not happy about that because luckily I packed two. One of them was full of this little guy. Mm -hmm. But luckily I packed two flasks and that went by way too quick. Yeah. So uh, future reference, if me and Jared are out in the woods, it's a bottle, not a flask. Um, packing advice number one. So let's keep track of that. Packing advice number one. Make sure you bring your flask. If not, just go ahead and bring a whole bottle because it's going to be worth it. You're sitting around a campfire. And yeah, uh, we we uh, we were totally planning on stopping to get provisions before we got to the campsite. 
Uh, next thing we knew, we were at the campsite and didn't exactly know where the closest place to get provisions was. Yeah, I think the process, I was talking to somebody about this uh, yesterday. I think the process was, was we were, the roads that we were going to were like two lane roads, completely, uh, <laughs> completely <laughs> empty, no traffic. Um, and we were just like, all right, we're, we're basically erasing the sunset. So we wanted to get to the campsite before it got dark. And I was just thinking, I was like, you know, we hit this one road and I was like, well, the next gas station I see, we'll stop there or the next dollar general we see anything like that. So we can pick up provisions. I wanted and to grab like a gallon of water. We wanted to roast wieners over the fire. Yes. I said wieners and all those fun stuff. And like, next thing we knew we were at the campsite and it's like, Oh, we need to go back or we just go forward. Yeah. It was like, but going back was literally probably 11 miles, 11, 12 miles. So it was the next the closest gas station was 11 miles. Yeah. So it, we were out there in the boondocks. You literally, it, I, my, my favorite part of the ride, you're going to see it on, on Flip's video. Are you going to try to do that on Sunday? Really? Yes. I'm going to try to get it out for Sunday. So my favorite part was the, uh, the dirt road. Well, it's not really dirt road because it's not Florida. We have sand roads, I guess. And it was like this, like literally like, it would have been a blast if I was on a dirt bike. Yeah. Like it, it was. I would have hurt myself. Self if I was on a dirt bike. Yeah, I would have been launching, like, yeah, exactly. trying, trying to skip them. But, yeah, it was in the middle of nowhere. We got to this, the end of this road, and it was literally went from pavement to doing this. At which point we found the random dude with a backpack and, like, hiking sticks. And I'm just, like, looking at this guy, and it's like, this guy has got either the worst or the best story. Either he's lost everything, and this is all he has left, or... He's doing one of those, like, I'm walking across Florida or this country or the state or whatever. Really wanted to talk to him, but, you know, I also really want to get my tent going. Yeah. Uh, so, Wild Rider pinged in. My wife doesn't think I can make a trip to Virginia on my own this summer. This would be the longest ride I take so far. Anyways, to en anyways of encouragement for her uh, that you'll be fine. Um you know what? It's it's no different on a motorcycle on the highway than it is in a car. Something that we experienced on the way home, it was <laughs> like, it was that last like, all right, we're ready to get home. We're, we're at that point, we're coming back home, racing the sunset. We wanted to get home just like we wanted to get to camp before the the sun went down. And uh, so we, I, I just, I was in the lead. I just said, screw it, let's jump on the interstate. We'll cover more ground quicklier. And uh, we got on the interstate and just hit the throttle. And we both experienced it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was weird. It was like an outer body experience. Like you kind of like, like your body, like, like autopilot kicked in. Yeah. I, I don't think it was, I don't think it was a normal riding experience. It's probably because we got very little sleep the night before. It wasn't great sleep. What we did get. And we had been riding literally since nine o'clock that morning. And it was already five o'clock at five, six o'clock. Yeah, so we were pretty tired. So yeah, we were we we're on the interstate. We just like zoned out, like literally just holding the throttle. And I just remember at one point, like, I remember like clicking back in going, I can't feel my hands. I can't feel my butt. I'm still just going. Yeah, it was it was crazy. It was awesome. It, it was, I wouldn't um, say the you couldn't feel your hands and butt because it wasn't the temperature. It was just like it was, the, the, yeah, it was just, it was it was just sitting in this is position yeah. for hours. Um, if anything, my my best piece of advice for when it comes to like long hauls like that is uh, either uh, a lot of podcasts or audiobooks. Your brain kind of like has a focus, <laughs> so as you're doing it, like you're not like you're not thinking about like where's the next turn, how many more miles on this road you're kind of paying attention to a story while you're going and it kind of relaxes you in a weird way. That's my favorite thing to do is like listen to podcasts. And I did. Books. I actually, I actually did that the, in the morning when, after we had breakfast, uh, that I put on, uh, I follow five dirty bikers podcasts and they had did a podcast with my buddy, Tyler Malinky from low Brow customs. And I was like, Hey, let me check out this podcast. And I put it on that morning and just kind of listened to it. And, uh, that got me through the first, uh, hour of the ride, and then after that, I was like, "All right, let's just listen to some music," and I just rocked out from there. Uh, so, uh, also, also, promise your wife that you're going to stop every hour and take a 15 minute break. That's that, very important as well. Yeah, we learned that like 
there was, we, we had planned stops throughout the route, but um, yeah, they, they probably needed to be a little bit more frequent. Uh, but we were on a kind of a timeline. We wanted to hit different times at diff or different places at different times. Um, I like this question from Toby. Uh, Toby asks, how far in advance did you plan the trip? Less than two weeks. Yes, it, a lot less than two weeks, actually. It was like for the official play. Like, I didn't finalize the route until the night before. Lucky for me, he did all the work on that part. <laughs> We were uh, just having coffee the day out. Uh, it was the week weekend after Christmas, and we were talking. And said like we want to go camping. Like I bought all my gear during Amazon Prime Week because everything was like twenty percent off at that point, and I'd just been waiting for the chance. And it's kind of like he said he wanted to go before school started, and I just want to go. Period. We went. Sometimes just pulling the trigger is the best thing you can do. Yeah, I I, I tend to be uh be in the military side of me. I tend to over plan things. <laughs> And I think I like that. Um, it's not bad to be prepared, but it, I mean, you can ask my wife. It's like when we plan a vacation, I know everything we're going to do at all, like all steps of the way. And it kind of takes away for me. It takes away the spontaneity of having fun in the moment. But it's also like I'm super organized. and I want to make sure that we get things done. Uh, Brian asked, uh, what was Flip's favorite lesson about camping and what trick did I? Weems pull on the first timer. Hand sanitizer. I bought some the next day. So, Jared Weems over here is Mr. Uh, survivalist and whatever. And he's trying to teach me how to use like a flint stick, how to start a fire. Like we're trying to scrape magnesium off of his magnesium stick. Nothing was working. And it's like, I refuse to use a lighter. So he goes, here's another trick. And he just pulls out a little thing of hand sanitizer and he goes, Bloop. Little dob, just top, 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 instant, instantly started. Uh, the gel stuff, the little, the little bobbles, the, the ninety-nine cent stuff, instant. Great thing about it is it catches fire and it doesn't sink in anything. It sits on top of whatever you're playing with, so you can just put stuff on top. So hand sanitizer, get some. It's too easy, man. Just pack it right in your bag. I mean, it's literally, you know, about the size of a light, a cigarette lighter. Oh, so. uh, uh, if I'm not have to put a second, most necessary thing is a. Uh, Shovel or a hatchet. <laughs> I've yeah. always wanted to buy one of those military folding shovels, or I just, I just want a hatchet, period. Um, but, like, I always want to buy things, and I always, like, second-guess it because I know it's just my own stupidity. Like, I want a hatchet because I want a hatchet. Not because I want a survival hatchet, just because I want a hatchet. But that's what we got. So I had planned out uh, – well, first thing I asked him because this was his – first camping experience, I said, you know, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to have amenities? Do you want to have a bathroom? Do you want to have electricity? What do you want? And, and he's like, he's like, it doesn't matter to him. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a primitive camper. I like having the least possible, bring in what you need and make do with what you have. And uh, so I found this amazing campsite. Some of you guys seen some of the promo pictures. Uh, it, it's a place called Yates Marsh, and it's just on the north side of Lake Okeechobee. Uh, it's a wilderness preserve, and uh, and you go out there, and there's nothing. It's basically you pull through. They give you a gate code. You go through that gate, and you figure it out on where you want to stay, where you want to put your tents up. So we decided uh, we rode around a little bit on the bikes, and uh, I they, said they, they have like trees, overgrown areas where you can camp under trees, and they also just had an open field, which is mm -hmm. rad. So we said, you know, hey, let's let's just set up in the middle of the field, and uh, there's also a lot of like squishy grass with like so like it was like a, almost like a little padding as well. We thought it was going to be, but it didn't. Oh, I, I I felt it like in the middle of the night, like I like reached under my pillow, where it's like a big like lump, like a knot in the earth. <laughs> I'm like, great, two feet that way would have been great. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so the, one of the challenges was... Hey, Saddle Tramp. What's going on, man? Um, I don't know who that is. Saddle, Saddle Tramp? Tramp? I'm, no. I met him with the chain. Cool. Good to see you. Uh, hope everything's going well with the barn rebuild. Sweet. Yeah, he got caught in a hurricane or something like that and, like, trashed his shit. And took, uh, oh, yeah, dude. I'll show you when we're done. Uh, so yeah, one of the, uh, uh, one of the things we had to do is we said, we're going to set up in the middle of a field and I knew we we're going to do a fire. And then this field, it was kind of like sage grass, which you would think like sage grass. And, uh, so we had to, uh, to make do with what we had, where we were at. And so that's when my favorite tool in my packing aid came into play. So this hatchet 
works really well as a shovel. Hey, there's more and, to this hatchet. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a jack of all trades over here. Yeah, it's got all kinds of cool tools to it. Got a saw. It's got a bread it. knife inside of it. It's got a striker up here. So if you wanted to strike some fire, you got a striker and stuff. So, yeah. Um, one thing big on camping, guys, is is try to get tools that you can that will do more than one thing. And that's why um, I made sure I threw the hatchet in there uh, because I knew that he wouldn't have one. I knew that he didn't have a shovel. So I was like, hey, just go, you know, even you if you didn't have a shovel either. Okay. <laughs> that's my shovel, buddy. Come on. He shoveled out a lot of dirt. Yeah, we, we dug a hole. We made sure to get all the dead stuff out of the way, man. Nice little holes, just dirt. And yeah. There, there's a few, there was like a handful of times where the uh, fire tried to get away from us, but we kept, we kept an eye on it. It didn't try to get away from us. We're good, one hundred percent safe. <laughs> so yeah, that that was uh, some experience on it. So what do we got? We got some more questions coming in here. Kerosene, something learned this fall that kerosene and solid dust is good start up. Yeah, don't 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 catch yourself on fire, people. Oh, I mean, there was that one part. What's that? When the fire wasn't started and we decided to try to start it faster. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here's. <laughs> Here's another piece. So we, the one thing we were talking about, I, the one thing I made sure I did research because I, the campground, they, they would not allow you to harvest wood. You couldn't cut down a tree. It's a nature preserve. That's, that's, that's a lot of work regardless. They would, they would allow you to use anything you found laying on the ground that was already dead and fell down. So we knew that we're going to have to get firewood. And uh, so I had the day before I'd called around to some different grocery stores to, um, home supply stores and to find out if anybody had firewood in stock and everywhere I called, they were out of stock. Uh, and last place I called, they're like, yeah, good luck. Nowhere in town has it. Uh, so I knew that in the back of my mind, we needed to keep an eye out on, on the route going in. Cause we, we did what, how many miles to the campground? It was 150 to the campground. 152. So, and we were taking a lot of back roads, some really small towns, and luckily we found a little small town that was, uh, we didn't know they were selling firewood. And I don't think he was. Wachuku? Wachula. 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 And uh, I don't think he was selling the firewood, but we kind of stopped in and said, hey, you know, you uh, have this huge stack of firewood. Can we buy some? And uh, he was kind of like, yeah, I'll sell you, sell you firewood for a dollar a piece. So we're like, heck, we're not going to need that much. Everybody's um, out of firewood at this point, either way. Yeah. So we uh, we bought like 15 pieces of split firewood. So about that big and about yay big around. So um, I knew that we we're going to have to use the old hatchet to uh, cut cut some up to make some kindling and, and start the fire. But um, yeah, so that was that was a fun thing. We uh, we loaded up the uh, firewood on the bikes. 550 cord. Get some. They're really cheap and really easy to pack up. Yep. So 550 cord. Here's something. Woo! Hear that? Well, I'm sure they my microphone's right here. <laughs> so, yeah, 550 cord. Here's here's a here's some army advice for you. A lot of people call it paracord. And this, I was a parachute rigger in the army, so I could tell you what. Oh, what really this. quick. Be right before you go on that one. Somebody asked, like, what did what were you in the army? So yeah. Uh, so what service branch were you in? I was in the army. I was a parachute rigger, which means I packed parachutes and jumped out of airplanes. Um, and uh, a part of that process was also fixing parachutes who broke or had holes in them. Anyway, so uh, 550 cord. It's not paracord. Uh, it's utilized on some some parachute systems, but it's not paracord. Uh, 550. The reason they call it 550 cord is because you take a strand of that one strand of that 550 cord. And the breaking strength is 550 pounds. So one piece of that string will suspend 550 pounds. So the remember more that. you know, go Joe. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. And then inside, inside of the 550 cord are seven cores, seven little small pieces of string. And those little pieces of string, you can pull them down and make fishing line out of them. So, <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. We didn't go fishing, but but I know that now. But 550 cord. Uh, a hatchet, a knife, water, 550 cord. I think we're covering good ground. Might be asking what, uh, what are you doing over there, Flip? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we did while we were out there is we made hot chocolate. And uh, now one of Jared's new favorite things, it's uh, not just hot chocolate. It's alcoholic hot chocolate with this stuff called chartreuse. It is absolutely delicious. Um, so good. You try it by itself, and you'd be like, how the hell does that go with hot chocolate? Trust me, try it. Um, it's not the cheapest thing to buy, but it is absolutely delicious and absolutely worth it. It's an after dinner drink, you, you know, and just sip on it. Uh, so yeah, no, while we're while we're doing this, like talking about camping, we're gonna make some camping booze. Yeah. So while we're and making our camping mugs. So while we uh, while we're doing the uh, the camping, uh, making the hot chocolate. Uh, as you guys have questions, uh, if you would just uh, uh, when you ask the question, put at Weems Motor Co. Uh, that way it pops up on my phone a lot easier. I can see those questions. Way for us. Um, so I can see them a lot easier. Uh, Walter Fletcher, I've jumped out of a perfectly good airplanes too. Thank God for the guy who packed my shoots. Well, Walter, what I always say is there's no perfectly good airplanes. That's why they have airplane mechanics. <laughs> that's and, why they have parachutes. And that's why I jump out of them. So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Cool stuff, dude. Uh, Fort Benning. I was, the only time I was at Fort Benning... Uh, was actually for Airborne School. That was 2003. And then I went back there for Jump Master School. Um, but yeah, that was that was the only times I was at Fort Benning. I was special operations most of the time. Um, do, do, do. Uh, look, right there's an aircraft mechanic in the Navy. Uh, who is that? Willow's Mutt. You could tell us that there's no good air, no perfectly good airplanes, right? Uh, so, Moto Mortician. How was it spending so many miles on a modern motorcycle? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so kind of on the down low, I've been talking with Flip and and uh, been considering the possibility of starting a YouTube channel. And uh, so uh, I was all set up with GoPros and mics and stuff like that on this trip. So uh, you may catch some of those scenes on Flip's video. Um, you might catch some of my audio on that. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not, but he's more than willing to use everything. Uh, but something I did learn was uh, heated grips are awesome. <laughs> They're amazing. Uh, blinkers never fail to turn themselves off. They always stay on once you turn them on. Unless you're in a Harley. Um, yeah, I don't know. See, it's modern motorcycle stuff. Uh, the shifter is on the wrong side. It's on the left side of the bike. The right side is the right side. Says you, Grandpa. Um, and Whoa. you gonna you gonna make me some of that, or you yeah, just no. you gonna be stingy? No, that's, that's hot. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. Well, that here don't, is. Don't burn yourself. I'm trying not to. Jeez, this guy. Mm. You didn't burn. You didn't get a camp. Now you're just jacking it up now mm. on video. So yeah, uh, modern motorcycles are cool, man. You could, they have this really cool thing on the right hand grip. It's a red button that actually starts the motorcycle. <laughs> That's cool. Every time. And it starts when you push it. It's weird. You like, you don't have to do anything with your feet. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to prime carburetors. You don't, you, yeah, it just starts right up. But the coolest thing was, was my dear friend here, Flip, he let me ride a Triumph. So. Everybody knows me. I'm a Triumph guy, tried and true. I am too. I love them. I just like motorcycles in general. So uh, Wind Road Therapy, that's Desri. What's up, girl? Uh, she asked Flip, who did the cooking? Uh, we cooked our own ramen meals. Uh, I made the hot chocolates like I'm doing right now. Uh, Jared supplied the Vienna sausages and the, and the beef jerky. So, Yes. Vienna sausage, you guys. It, it's great for survival and stuff. I'll give <laughs> you that. I love it. I love it. And I think I might have gross flip out, and I'm going to do it on camera. Yeah, go for it. It's all uh, you. I'm, 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 got a, I, I'm making, I got a palate cleansers right here. So the great thing about Vienna sausage is not only do you get sausage, but you have pretty much the most amazing beverage that you can think of. I'll eat the sausages. You can do the shot. Mm. It's delicious. And what's great about it is it has like salt. So salt is actually good for you. I thought it was bad for you. In certain situations of survival, salt can be very advantageous. 
Good, good, good word. Good Aven- word. Advantageous. Good sir. Good sir. Mm. I'm not gonna drink this yet because this is like this. Y'all, it's y'all super see hot. That steaming. Steaming hot. Go grab some ice cubes from inside. <sighs> so yes. Advantageous salt. Yes, salt is good in certain survival situations. It can help with nutri- uh, nutrition, nutri- nutrients. Um, so Jared had survival training, I guess, where it's like a, a pocket knife and a tarp will survive for weeks in the woods type of thing. So yep, I would love to get like Kyle and AJ and all of us idiots to go out there and do like survival training with like a pocket knife. Who votes for naked and afraid shade tree army style? Let's not do the naked part about that one. <laughs> The afraid in the woods, yes. I you got afraid when those coyotes started howling, buddy. Uh, you were concerned. I wouldn't say you were afraid. I wasn't afraid. I was just being precautionary. Precautionary. I was more worried about that big animal that was walking through the woods than I was about those coyotes. Was walking too slow. Walking too slow. Because <laughs> he was, uh, what is, what is it called? And uh, far away. He was uh, stalking us. That's oh, now you feel like that. It's scary. All right. Let's see what uh, other questions we've had ping in here. All right. Let's, let's see what we've got from Instagram top. over here. Uh, hey, Jared, since you're, since you're listening to country and I don't, uh, Hank, one, two, or three. Oh. Oh. I go with three just because he does metal shits, too. Um, man. Um, huh, that's a great question. Um, it's not that hard. To, it, it's a, it's a, it's a three part question. It, my it's a, heart is going to go. Senior. Um, Doesn't everybody hate junior? My my, like Miller High Life drinking times would go junior, <laughs> and then my shooting whiskey would be the third. So yeah, so that's that's kind of where it goes. My heart, my drinking beer, my drinking liquor. But I like all three of them. They're great. I mean, they're amazing. They're definitely uh. Cut from the same rug. What's up? Um, would you do it? Would you go camping in the summer in Florida weather? I do. Um, actually, I was telling Flip about this. So something I've done is survival training. And um, I took a group of, I think it was around 20 middle school. Sure. I took a group of uh, around 20 middle school uh, boys out to the middle of the wilderness. The only thing that they were allowed to pack was a pocket knife a tarp and a bag of trail mix. And we went out to the woods for three days and uh, I showed them how to do fire making skills. I taught them uh, how to make fire by rubbing sticks together. Uh, Pretty much any process that uh, I could do fire, I showed with them. Of course I had my pack with me that had a lot of different uh, tools and things, but those boys survived for three days with a pocket knife, trail mix and a tarp. And I can tell you what, as soon as we got to site, um, it was pouring down rain and it rained every day for three days. And we had to do like a mile and a half trek or hike into the campsite. So it was fun stuff. It was cool. Um, obviously, uh, being in the military taught, taught a lot of survival skills and things like that, being in special operations, um, but also growing up in the backwoods of Tennessee, um, having fun in the woods and stuff there. So, yeah. Um, so Mike Fishman, is that your dad's bike? Um, so you're looking at probably the blue bike behind flip. Uh, this bike right here behind, behind me is the, the other David man triumph. Uh, I got to have that bike done by the end of next month. So why? Thank you, sir. We only got about a half hour left in the flash stream anyways. That's it. That's it. I mean, if you want to keep going longer, I'm in, but. I I was haunted by the ghost of Joe Lucas for always blasting electric. Okay, that's that's a me that's a me thing. Um, Lucas, the Prince of Darkness, it was the manufacturer for all of the electric parts on Triumphs, um, and they suck. Here's, <laughs> here's a joke for you. Okay. Why do Englishmen always drink their beer warm? Because AC doesn't work over there. No. Because the refrigerators use Lucas Electronics too. <laughs> it's a deep cut. Yeah, I mean, I love it. I love the quirkiness of of old British motorcycles. I like it. I don't know. It's to me, 
you know, it has a soul to it. You got to know what you're doing and, and be able to work on it. So, yeah. All right, what's going on? Let's let's ask Flip some by uh, some questions. So this was Flip, your first camping trip. Yes. What was your worst experience on the camping trip? Uh, probably falling asleep, just because I hate falling asleep with silence. I had to turn on my phone at one point and like put on a podcast, just sleeping. He snores. There's that too. Yeah, I'm a snorer. Sn but he also snores weird. I'm weird. Septums, deviated stuff, whatever. It's like short snores. It's like I don't hear it, so I snore too. So yeah, was, I would wake up and I'm like, "Is Jared awake?" Then I hear him snoring. I'm like, "Cool, I'm going back to sleep." <laughs> I like, think it's we not did time that. to get up. It's like, have either one of us been impelled by some <laughs> by coyote? Board. By the no, that's right. It's because you said it was a boar. That's what yeah. scared me. It wasn't the coyotes. It was the fact that you said it might be a boar. It might be a boar. Florida, hey, it might be a panther. There's Florida panthers. There's all kinds of stuff. Kitties. Yeah. Somebody told us the that there was like a 12 foot alligator that was in the the river right beside our camp too. Yeah, some <laughs> random dudes like, yeah, we've been camping for seven months in random state parks. I'm like, well, okay, that's weird. Yeah. I think it was like like driving a Volkswagen Jetta. Oh, I didn't even see a vehicle. Well, at one point when we went around, it looked like that was his camp. Uh, somebody asked about the the raffle. Man, it's going great. Uh, as long as I don't mention it on Instagram, they shut me down immediately. Like I can't hashtag raffle. Uh, it's weird. Um, but thanks for asking about it. Um, so this past weekend, we broke fifty thousand dollars that we've raised for Forgotten Angels to build these kids' uh, tiny homes. So, so thank you guys for that. It's going amazing. We're in that last sixty days. That last is that the next place we're gonna camp? Yeah. So they're doing a camp out. At the Forgotten Angels on March 19th. So if anybody's uh, interested in coming down to Florida, March 19th, it's going to be an overnight event. Um, All of us are going to be there. Yeah. All of us. Come see Flip, see Josh, see Shay, see all, everybody. Everybody's going to be there. Um, Kyle, AJ, and yeah, it's going to be everybody. a blast. It's going to be a, it's going to be a big party. Yeah, doing a huge but, bonfire. So they have like, like 15 acres, and you can yeah. camp there and. Yeah, so we're going to camp out there. They're going to have a big stage set up. They're going to bring in some some musical acts and things. They're going to be doing a lot of giveaways. Obviously, we're giving away uh, the the triumph. So, yeah, man, come on down March 19th. Uh, if you have any questions about it, hit either Flip or myself up on Instagram and uh, and get the, get the info. It's going to be a good time. No, we didn't get hammered because we ran out of whiskey really quick. That was a question. Did we get hammered? It would have been nice. I probably probably wouldn't. My feet would have stayed warm in the night. At, at one point, we got just decided that we were going to go find more firewood because it ran out. <laughs> so we're in the dark with like two little flashlights looking for like this one specific plant that was just dead that caught fire really well. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was fun. That's my favorite thing to do is go find firewood in the night. Cheers. Cheers, sir. Thank you. Walmart is selling these awesome candy mugs. It's like $3 or whatever. It's still hot. I got more. It's still hot. It's not that hot. Um, so, yes, I posted up a video <laughs> on my Instagram. And a lot of people pinged in. They're like, uh, what's that last thing you said right at the very end? And I was talking about where we're going for breakfast. Yeah, on that note, Bobber Fett asked, where did you poop? <laughs> <laughs> we pooped at the Dingaling. Dingaling Diner. Right in Okeechobee City, whatever the hell it is. Oh, man. I, it was funny because I was like, what is the culture? What are the people like <laughs> in Okeechobee? I don't know if it's like a What kind of town. city is it? Is it a college like, town? Yeah, like, like what's the vibe? And uh, so I'm like, you know, looking for places to have breakfast the next morning because I knew we we're going to pack up camp and we needed to hit the road. We, we rode all the way around Lake Okeechobee. Um, but I just Googled... Uh, breakfast places in Okeechobee and like the second thing that popped up was ding-a-ling deli and I was just like sold I'm not even I don't care what's on the menu I don't care what they are they open for breakfast we're going there because it's you, called ding-a-ling you don't not go there and it, it was great so I was just a little worried about what's the vibe what's the people and we walked in and, and it's it's very country. Like I was quite surprised. I was like, it's a very country uh, kind of town, small town feel. 
Um, you know, everybody turned around and looked at us like, who are these bearded, tattooed biker guys walking? Yeah, but at least we were bikers. And we're like, okay, they're bikers. Yeah, they're like, oh, they expect that from us. So, but uh, yeah, no, so just got grabbed some breakfast there. And that is where Flip got to expel the uh, the product of the night before. So if you saw my last video, where this morning we had just enough water left over for one cup of coffee. And uh, I just decided it was not the best idea. Nothing's worse than road poops. Nothing is worse than road poops. I mean, I had a roll of paper towel ready to poop in the woods if I had to, but if I didn't have to, I wasn't going to. So, uh, get wrenched. Any critters visit you in the middle of the night? Apparently a boar. <laughs> I Almost immediately when we got there, we downloaded the firewood off the, the bikes, uh, which was which is another story. You'll be seeing that, uh, I'm sure, in Flip's video, the uh, the the loading of the wood and the adjustment of the load of the wood. Um, and uh, so like immediately when I downloaded my bags, the first thing I noticed was spiders. Like there was spiders like <laughs> in my bag. I'm like, why is there spiders already in my bag? And so Which led to a very interesting conversation about Jewish vampires. Yeah. That I forgot about our vampire vampire werewolf. Yeah. Uh, Cause we had no silver stakes to, for the wolf spiders, and then we started in on vampires, and how you never see a Jew in a vampire movie. Because come on, Mel Brooks, you can do it. I believe in you. Yes, and and the I I learned because you know how do you kill a vampire with a crucifix? Silver, still part of the silver, yeah. But a crucifix is not going to work on a Jewish vampire. And if you're a Jew and you don't have any crucifix, how do you stop? You know. I'm just saying. Think about it. It made sense to me. I was like, I'm sold. Like, yeah. Uh, well, there's a couple of crickets and some wolf spiders. That was about the critters. Yeah, and I didn't have any of my like when I was setting up my tent. I noticed a, a grasshopper about eh, probably about an inch and a half long, and I just grabbed it, threw it out of my tent, and zipped down the the uh, um, the 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 net door. I normally don't. I normally don't. I forgot to close mine the entire time <laughs> until I went to sleep. I normally don't camp in a tent. I, I usually camp in a hammock, um, which is great for Florida because it gets so stinking hot in Florida. Um, and my my hammock has a, a net built in, and I usually put a tarp over the top so I keep the water out. It keeps you off the ground. You don't have to worry about That's snakes. what I really want to do next. Yeah. It also um, like packs down a lot less stuff in your bag. Oh, yeah. It takes a lot less time. Um, but I knew it was going to be cold, so I was like, being on the ground gets you more insulation. So uh, camping in a tent is better to do in the winter. If you're hanging up in a hammock, man, you're going to freeze to death. So <laughs> Here's an interesting one. Do you think it's safe for a new rider to go moto camping with all the extra gear? Are you, I'm assuming they're asking about the load on the yeah. bike. Um, I think it's just like anything else, honestly, where it's just like if you're – If you've a passenger on the back. You, you're probably good. Yeah, but it's. I think it's just more of like just know your limits and don't do anything stupid. Like any motorcycle rule, just know what the situation you're in. Uh, you'll, you'll notice on the video, you'll see some pictures because I was riding the Bonneville. It's a flat seat, um, and Flip had the sissy bar with the sissy bar bag. He also had saddlebags. Uh, so you'll see a couple different ideas on how to, how to pack. Um the, the big thing was the adjustment when, uh, and nine, well, it depends on where you're going. Uh, nine times you, you'll need firewood. So you'll see how we cross loaded the firewood. Obviously I was uh, able to hold a little bit more. On yeah. You did a way better job on that one than I did. What you had like maybe five pieces and I had 10, something like that. You got 20 um, total. Was it? Or no, was we got 15. 15. We yeah, got 15. So I had about five, you had about 10. Yeah, and I, because of the this way I have Tarps, like, Walmart, three dollars. Grab yeah. one. They fuck. They fall down real quick and stay in the back. It's, they're great. Yep. It's another essential pack item is a tarp. So that's what number four. Number four. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things when it came to packing up where it was like, do I need this? Do I not need this? Is this too much? Is this unnecessary? And it just kind of learned. What was something that you brought that you didn't use? My AeroPress, <laughs> my coffee, uh, toilet paper. I brought trash trash bags. Uh, that's I'm happy I didn't need to use it because we didn't really have too much trash. We didn't really have any trash. It wasn't the trash. I mean, but they're good in case it rains. Yeah, it was more about like being able to put things in and keep it dry. It's just 
again, that's something that folds down and you just pack away. Yeah. Uh, as far as me, um, something that I brought that I didn't use. Um, I brought a change of clothes, which is not a bad thing to do in case you are caught in the rain. You'll have some dry clothes to change into. But I did. I, I basically just threw another. I mean, we went through a lot of buds, so <laughs> so I just put another flannel on the next day just to to have. Uh, a, there's a lot. There was a, a fresh target for bugs to hit. <laughs> so uh, something to wipe off your wind, your screen with. Yeah, what? like that. Well, so. Something I wish I would have brought besides the flask, uh, baby wipes. Um, I, I, I thought, thought I did. I thought I, I was going to, but I, I essentially forgot. Uh, I think, well, I, I, think I opted against it since I was bringing in toilet paper. Well, the thing is, is uh, and I have two or three, pa I have packs of these in my bug out bag, is the, uh, um, the toilet wet wipes. They're actually biodegradable. So you don't have to worry about, you know, messing with the environment or anything. You can just go to the bathroom, use them, and just toss them. They're biodegradable. But they also work. Which is also another like reason why you need a shovel so you can dig a hole and then that stuff. The only reason you want to dig a hole is keep other people from stepping in it. But whatever. Where does a bear poop? I mean. In the woods. Not at the ding -a -ling. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so next time you're at like uh, the grocery store, pick up some of those disposable toilet wipes. Well, the gradable and, ones. Yeah, the the ones that are. Um, these are also you all can wipe things. Your windshield, you know. These are also all things that you can typically find in the travel section for like a, a less than two or three dollars. Yeah. So they come in even smaller packs. My favorite thing that I brought ended up being this thing. It's a Zippo hand warmer. And you just fill it up with Zippo fluid, light it up, and I just stuffed it in my little kangaroo pouch overnight. Just kept my hands there. Oh, man, that helped so much. You know what helped me? Heated grips. <laughs> <laughs> I can tolerate cold pretty well, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Yeah, it, you know, the ride wasn't that cold. It wasn't. Um, the um, I thought it was going to be colder the next morning. Uh, when we had a long haul. How many miles did we cover that? The second day? Second day. Just under 300 miles? Just under 300 miles. We literally left from uh, Dingling Deli, and we went did the We did the north of, the, of Lake Okeechobee, mm -hmm. drove to the bottom of Lake Okeechobee, All the way and around. straight across Florida. Basically straight across the state of Florida. Yeah. It was, it was the fattest part of Florida, too. Yeah, the the widest portion. Um, but it, I'm sure he's going to show some video on it. There was, there was a... Lake Okeechobee. I they got have maps. A, I'm putting up too. They have a they have a levee around, obviously around the so you can't see a whole lot. But there was this one portion where we came up and we went over the uh, um, the ferry way, and just beautiful. You could see the lake forever, and uh, just a, just an amazing. It reminded me of Lake Michigan. Yeah, yeah, because you can't see across this thing. It's it's definitely wide, but we we got to the other side and man, it we hit we did a refuel. After that refuel, shotgun Red Bulls. Yeah, we shot. I forgot my very first shotgun. It yes. helped for that stretch. It was thirty-three miles on that road. Oh no, it was when we first got on that road. Oh, it was, it was yeah. forty-two miles on a two-lane road that was straight, no curves. Forty-two miles. It's pretty rad, straight. in my opinion. It was cool because it was like you know it was the perfect time of day. Like we weren't tired yet, um, and the the sun was out. It was beautiful temperature, and man. We just hit the throttles and and went. We got like almost. We got about three quarters of the way, and Flint was like, "Hey, let's just pull over for a minute and just kind of stretch our legs." And got off and literal looked. middle of nowhere, just yeah. farmland and cows. There was no cars on. I mean, like, I think when you grabbed your camera, the first car came by, like, in the first time we've seen somebody in probably an hour, an hour and a half. But yeah, it was cool stuff, man. Definitely good. Let's see if we got anything else from uh, the Instagrams. Marley wants to know what's your favorite bird. Marley wants to know what my... What is the best kind of bird? Is she talking about to eat? I don't know. Probably. My favorite bird to eat. <laughs> I don't think that's what she meant, but that's where we're going. Uh, I, I was in New York once, and I had some really amazing quail 
but I was disappointed because it's like this big. Um, but my favorite bird, a condor. Some kind of falcon is my opinion. I also just really like turkey legs because it's easy to hold and it's a lot of meat. You ever been to uh, uh, Medieval Times? Oh, yeah. I got knighted. Really? Yeah. yeah. My nice. ex-girlfriend stole the picture of me getting knighted. That's awesome. That's the worst part. But, yeah. No, I know the queen. I met her. She's a friend. She was a friend. I know her kind of. She's super famous on Instagram, too. Oh. Super awesome chick. Hashtag whatever her name is. Yeah. She's not hard to find. So also every time I think of medieval times, all I can think about is freaking cable guy. So <laughs> you have Pepsi, but you don't have a fork. Um, uh, as far as uh, as as uh, critters and things, I know on the way in. Um, unfortunately enough, uh, I seen uh, on our whole trip, I seen two. Uh, otters that had been hit by vehicles. There's a lot of dead animals in the road. Yeah, I mean, you got to think this is in the middle of nowhere, so there's plenty of animals. But I seen some otters that were like, I just wasn't looking. Like I, I see a body and I just keep, yeah, like that big. <laughs> All right, Chartreuse right. is getting a Jared over here. No, I need to drink more. Um, I seen something. <sighs> Wait, it's too bright behind Any words of any words of wisdom. I'm customizing my bike and it feels like I'm never get it back together. Uh Caden. Um yeah, man. Uh when it comes to building bikes, customizing bikes, and it's just and Flip can say this from experience too, because he had to work on his sportster. Um, you know, it's have a good plan in the beginning, know what you need to do and what you want to do. Uh, and kind of prior to, prioritize that out um, because quickly if you're doing a build or a restoration, um, it's like taking your thousand piece Lego <laughs> construction set and just demolishing it and setting the, uh, the instructions to the side and looking at it and saying, all right, I got to put this all back together. Um, yeah, you do have the manual to reference it but you no longer have everything separated in separate piles like they come in the Lego Little baggies. Pass. So it's definitely a difficult situation uh, doing that. I've had a lot of experience. I was just telling Flip yesterday, I was like, you could pick up a screw out of, I have like these random bins of screws, and I could tell you exactly where it goes on a motorcycle. You can tell you what year. Yeah. So uh, it just comes from experience. Don't get discouraged. Just, just. Stay, I feel like it's one of those like, how do you eat an elephant things? Like bite by bite. Mm -hmm. Like don't, don't try to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. Well, so your experience with your Sportster. Um, so you know that you had to what? What after your? Accident? I had to redo the front end. I knew that. So it was just kind of like get a front end, and then what? How you know? You got to start at the the bearings, and then you, you just kind of work your way out and. Basically what I did, it, it was just, also, it seems like one of those things where if you start customizing anything, you're never done. Unless you know exactly what you're going to do. Because I don't know anything about paint. I don't know anything about a final product. I just wanted to get my motorcycle running and rolling, and that's what it's doing. And now as to the expensive -er parts of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The expensive -er. <laughs> Okay. there's nothing cheap about a motorcycle. No. The cheapest thing in a motorcycle is the air you put in the tires. So the dirty shame, if you if you ask nicely, uh, Josh has a hose that runs from a nitrogen tank. You put nitrogen in your tires. Nice. That's awesome. Well, that's a Richard thing. Yeah. But Richard has a nitrogen tank out there with a hose. I'm like, all right, cool. So uh, Toby says, can we repeat everything we said? He just got back on. Uh, I'm sure that it'll be repeatable when we're done. Yeah, we'll post it up. We'll post it up online. Uh, whoa, Crazy Joe 67. I love doing custom painting. There you go. There you go. I hate I it. I just don't know what I want to do with it. I hate it. Painting is the well, the painting's the easy part. It's the prep work before you paint is the hard Power part. Power tools. Got to be careful with that. <laughs> Gotta be, you put yourself in a hurting really quick with power tools. Um, let's see. Projects take a lot of painting. Yep, absolutely. 
Uh, what conditioner do you use for your luxurious beards? <laughs> uh, what pro beard products? Head and shoulder Old Spice scent. I go like this, and then I, I guess go I'm, like this. That's it. That's it for your products. Man, I, I'm I'm bougie. I got a beard straightener I use like once every two months. You don't need it. Um, so my beard products. Uh, your wife's also a hairstylist, right? She is. She makes me look good. Um. Cause I don't look good. Um, but uh, my beard products, I use Viking revolution. Uh, and my wife really loves the sandalwood scent. So whatever you can do to make your wife, your girlfriend or your significant other like you more and allow you to keep this amazing amount of manness attached to your face is what you want to do. So uh, mustache wax. Do you use mustache wax? I should. You should. Yeah. Um, so mustache wax. I, All right. Let's have a quick discussion about mustache wax. It's not just about doing, being able to do this. It's keep it out of your lips. It's supposed to, yeah. That's that's the main purpose of mustache wax. Yeah. Now I can do the handlebar thing. Yeah. So can I. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I use old Amish uh, mustache wax. So it's the best I've found. It holds like crazy. So good stuff. Amish beard oil is good too. I think any anything to do with Amish people is amazing because those guys they pretty much camp they, out every night. I mean, they have a lot of time on their hands. They have no electricity. I saw a time lapse of them putting up a barn, like a freaking like five thousand square foot barn in like two hours. I'm like how the like like twenty guys out there working on it, yeah, like, knocking it out. That's all. They also have everything pre made, and it's just oh yeah, uh, no, they're pre. They don't have pre-made. They're pre-making it on the ground and then putting. Yeah, it I mean, like they have like pre, like a symbol to like lift, and they have years of experience. What is the proper length of a chain wallet to be a perfect Florida hipster? Do you have a chain wallet? No, because I'm afraid it's gonna ruin my paint. <laughs> I don't have a chain wallet. It's all about the hanky. Uh, so the we'll, therefore, hanky. therefore, we are not Florida hipsters. Oh, I'm a hipster. Are you? Oh yeah, thousand percent. Everybody also, calls, they call me the hipster Santa Claus. Also, so. we're at the point where it's just like I can't sit on a wallet anymore. So screw that. So I just got these little things. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Right in my front pocket. Front I can't pocket. sit on a wallet anymore. Hips just trashed. Yep. Front front pocket. And I'm like, try to pick pocket me. You're gonna get a handful of something. <laughs> <laughs> uh how you liking the new work site, Flip? What work site? Uh, I guess the new uh, Brap Star. That's great. I, I mean, we just. The toilet got fixed. Oh, yeah. The toilet's finally fixed at Brap Star. It's just a weird contradiction where it's like we got it there in summer where it's too hot to work in there, but it's the time of year where we do a lot of indoor stuff. It's like we're the opposite of the north because, like, as soon as it comes winter in Florida, it's too nice not to be outside. Get out and ride. So, like, now that it's winter, I just want to barely spend any time there as of right now. Yeah. And then when it gets. It's also like the whole Christmas season. Ruins it for everybody. I know how much you love it. I love Christmas, man. Love it, love it, love it, love it. But there's just but, so much going on. Well, the problem, too, is there's so many people because of all of the cold weather states come to Florida during the winter. So you guys end up ruining our riding season because there's so many people in traffic. How many, how many red lights did we catch on the way home? Literally all of them except for one. It was the worst. Like as soon as we got out of the backwoods and we saw a light, we hit every one of them except for one. Yeah, and you can you can find that on my video footage. Yeah. Like like I count, I started counting them. It was ridiculous. Took all the fun out of it. I started screaming in my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Took all the fun, but then outside of that, you know, we we seen one vehicle. We seen oh, one yeah, accident. All... One accident. You'll see that on the video. I'm not gonna give it away, but it was one accident. Um, yeah, we were like in the backwoods, so we didn't have to worry too much about other vehicles and doing dumb stuff like in tampa people drive. we were doing the dumb stuff that's right having fun too finding out the top speed of your motorcycle finding out not finding out the top speed of your friend's motorcycle because i went really fast and it never stopped going so she's a good girl it's a good girl i i definitely uh enjoyed it <laughs> definitely i would uh i would definitely do it again um, what, uh, what's left? What's left, buddy? Uh, we got we five up? minutes. Uh, just the usual subscribe stuff. 
the raffle. That's the most important thing. Yeah, guys. We like I said, we're gonna be tomorrow night. If you're local to the oh, Tampa yeah. area, tomorrow night we're gonna be set up at Born Free Pub and Grill. Waters um, in Florida. Waters and Florida Avenue. Go to my Instagram, WeensMotorCo.Tampa. You'll see a, a listing for it. Uh, but it's gonna be a super cool chopper show. Josh is gonna be judging something, which he's already judging everybody for everything, anyways. He's a judger. Um, but uh, so yeah, come out to that. It's gonna be some cool choppers, some cool motorcycles at that. And then this weekend is the Gibb Town Bike Fest. Blockhead's gonna come and hang out for that one. Yeah, it's gonna be a, a bunch of uh, carnies um, in Gibb Town riding motorcycles. It's gonna be a good time. But I'm gonna be there Saturday with the bike. We're not gonna do the whole booth. Uh, if you're looking for merchandise and stuff, um, just go to the website, place an order there. Uh, if you're gonna be local to the show and if you want to not have to pay shipping, order it and do pick up in person and just send me a message saying, Hey, can you deliver it to Gibb town that weekend? And I can knock that out for you guys here to help y'all. But um, uh, yeah, most of us will be around for, for Thursday night, the bike night at born free. Most of us will be at uh, Gibb town. I'll probably be there Saturday and Sunday where Josh will probably be there Sunday. Sunday's no fun. It's like when everybody's packing up, leaving. Yeah, but you know, people work in bars and stuff. Oh, that's true. So some people have jobs, not us. This is my job. We're unemployed. I'm not making enough money at this. I'm I'm a full-time student. I don't like homework. All right, rapid fire. Come on. Shoot them out. Here we go. Y'all ask Jared. Y'all ask what, Mom? That's my mom, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Miss Weems. Uh, gotta go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see you at Gibb Town, Wild Road. Uh, Weems Motor Co., what is your mom's nickname? My mom's nickname, oh, gosh, isn't it Rat? What's a Super Chat Cup button? Did I forget something? That's where people can pay money to talk to you. Oh, um, I have a PayPal. Yeah, send money to his PayPal. If you want to give me money, I'm not going to say no. Go go buy stickers from his uh where Yeah, my it? Etsy page has got stickers. I got one of those link tree things on my Instagram. You'll see things up there. Something I learned. Flip is from Brazil. Something else I learned. The NA, it's significant. It means something. I didn't know what it was until today. That's gonna be is that like an inside thing for you? I just don't think about it. Like I guess that is it not applicable? It's not applicable. But no, it's just one of those things that people just kept calling me, and it just, just, I think it's like in my second or third video, I actually like addressed that. Really oh, quickly. challenge. Do not go watch that go video. Back. Do not. I'm going to freaking make it private. Do not watch that video. <laughs> go check them out. So See awful. the early stuff, the early days. Guinness World Record poker run. Uh, guys going? No, no poker runs. No, but that's, uh, I seen something from. Not um, means not applicable. Not about applicable. About that. That's all not nah means. Uh, it's a really long and boring story. Um, hey, again, if more you guys, shirts, more shirts. They shirts, want more shirts. I'm, I'm working on it. Hopefully, next week I'll have it all done. Dinos! And hopefully, I'll have new designs coming out too. What? Yeah, dude, freaking Kiefer's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Man, have her do something. Sweet. And you go talk to that girl. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, uh, speaking of shirts, uh, coming up tomorrow night uh, is uh, Cali uh, Cali Designs on uh, Instagram. Cali Design Co. Uh, yeah, Cali or Cali Company. Cali Company. Yeah, Cali fine. Company, I believe. Just look up Cali. Go to mine. You'll see some like K K A L I. Yeah. Uh, she's gonna be set up tomorrow night at the event with me. Uh, she's gonna have all of her cool merchandise. Uh, she makes these really super awesome wood plaques. Uh, she has stickers, keychains, hats, shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. So come by and pick up some of her stuff. She's super cool, super awesome. She works on her own motorcycle too, so that's that's sweet. She built her own chopper. Built her own chopper. I think she go to like MMI. I don't know where she went. I think she actually went to school for it. Oh, I thought I heard that. Somewhere. I didn't. Whatever. I went to old school. Figure it out, break it, and then fix it. <laughs> um, do. 
There will be big man sizes this next run. If you're looking for big man sizes, listen, I got – see this this beautiful hoodie? Because a lot of you guys, it's cold where you're at right now. It's not so much cold for us right now. It's comfy. But I have these hoodies all the way up into a 4X. 4X. So if you're a big boy and you're looking for something cool to wear and you want to support Wings Motor Co., uh, go on to my website, wingsmotorco.com. You're not just supporting him. You're supporting everything that we're all doing mm -hmm. as a group of people, as a collective. That's it. All them, all us. You're not at six um, o'clock. Are we gonna you got, you got more time, or are we done? I don't. I got, how much hot chocolate you got? I got less than you. Cheers. It's still hot. Still so hot. All the marshmallows dissolved. Is that due to the chartreuse or due to the heat? I'm going with heat. Mustaches are amazing for hot chocolate. You it absorbs that, it. it keeps you get you that warm. little. You get that little second. Mm, <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> ah! All right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a really quick question here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give away some. What should I give away? I've got stickers. I've got shop rags. I've got shirts. I've, you know what? I'm gonna give away. A 2021 Greasy Culture calendar. Oh, yeah, calendar. These are super hard to find. They're from England, but we were featured as the month of November for 2021. So I'm going to give away that right now for you guys that are just in the chat. This is not for the replay. These are for the people that are in the chat right now. If you can guess... Hmm... hmm. What should we? What was she doing? If you can guess what year motor is going in the new David Mann bike, the other David Mann Triumph, if you can guess the year of that motor, not the bike, not the frame, not the transmission, the year of the motor, you're going to get the calendar. Uh, you also, uh, I would suggest this is uh, add it at your Instagram. So go on his Instagram, latest post. There you go. What he does. I, I'm not a tech person. So, 65, 52. Well, I'm looking. Nobody's nailed it yet. Nobody's there's got it yet. There's only so many years. There's only so many years. Yep, there's only so many years. People are so close, bouncing around, getting there, getting there. 1956 was the year my dad was born. It's not like a 63 or something like that. Mm -mm. I don't know. Nope, nope, nope. Gosh, I almost need my glasses. Y'all are so close. So close. <laughs> oh, there it is. Brian Spence. Brian Spence. Damn it, Spence. 1951 Triumph Thunderbird motor is going in that. So Brian Spence. That's awesome. Brian, just come to my house. <laughs> I'm not mailing. I'm not going to cover shipping for that. Come by the house. Pick it up. All right. Well, Flip, man, I had a, I had a blast. Yeah, bro. it was fun. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to do this again, and we'll just want to. I just had to do it because I didn't have enough time to make a video beforehand. Uh, on that note, you know how this works. You, you know all the stuff. Uh, you can't really like. You can like this video, please like it. I think you can like it. And and we're on YouTube, so you yeah, can subscribe if, to us channel. If you're already not. Yeah. And uh, other than that, catch you on the flip side. Peace.